I feel your pain. Well, Tuesday when I left, I went to the hospital. State, they gave me an IV and medicine and stuff. Mm -hmm. You had a CAT scan. Two, two kidney stones coming through. They said they're small enough that they, they should make it through. No, I know. Should or are. Yeah. Said, long story short, I left so the home and then I uh, woke up yesterday morning and I was like, still going to come no in. Recording? But I was in more pain then than I was yesterday or, or Tuesday. Mm -hmm. morning, so I was like, I better stay home. So I laid in bed until 1.30. Mm -hmm. Finally, the pain sort of went away. So I think, but the problem is with them, is like last time I did some you get this immense pain and then it goes away and then it comes back and all of a sudden it comes back because you haven't passed it yet. So I don't know if I, ha I haven't I haven't noticed that I passed it yet. Either of them. So oh my gosh, I'm here. <laughs> okay. Well, I will tell you that's the pain that females feel every month, and we just handle it. <laughs> well, they well they say it's childbirth. So. Oh yeah, no. Hey, that's I, I, don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. <laughs> I think it was um, Winona Judge. She just thought she described childbirth birth as having a watermelon come through your nostril. I'm so happy. So there you go. All right, everyone. I'm going to call the docket. When I call the docket, let me know you are here. In custody, we have James Kennedy. I'm here, Judge. Thank you. Renee Torres. Renee Torres. Veronica Alvarez, custody. Satara Portillo, custody. Joseph Boboa, custody. Abby Marino, custody. Torrance Knowles. Torrance Knowles. Lisa Garcia. Thank you. And custody, Carvel Mayfield. Sergio Martinez. Hillary Stillman. Sean Chrisman, Tamar McIntyre, Joe Pope, Joe Pope. Okay, we will check on that. Arwan Barwani, Arwan Barwani, Andrew Arnett. Okay, Yolanda Kaufman, custody, Richard Sosa, custody. I think maybe a lot of people are dependent on AT&T's alarm, but you know what? AT's phone may be out, but their alarm is working. That I know. Shane Riley. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Acosta. Christian Smith. Sarah Gutierrez. Thank you. Joseph Shubiak. Hank Finney. Hank Finney in custody is Amadean Smith. Jerry Torres. Where? Jerry Torres, where are you? Everyone, when I call your name, if you're here, you need to stand. John Lyles, custody. Alex Espinoza. Renee Torres. David Alvera. Here. Thank you. Nathan Cruz, custody. Juan Ramos, custody. Juan de Jesus. Gus Gallegos, custody. Make sure your phone is off. Matthew Hughes. Thank you. Raymond Amaya. Bang. Raymond Amaya. Alfredo Lugo. Alfredo Lugo. Daniel Ramirez. Thank you. Gabriel Almanza Vaquera. All right. What did you not understand my instructions when your name is? I'm sorry. He's Spanish speaker. Oh, say that in Spanish for me. <laughs> I could have said that in Spanish. <laughs> okay. Eduardo Lopez. Eduardo Lopez Tovar. In custody is Jose Garzas, Hank Maldonado, Hank Maldonado, Adrian Harper, Christopher Acosta,
All right, Carlos De La O, Camillus Galvan, thank you. Ralph Campos, Larry Evans, Larry Evans, Jose Ruiz, custody. Why is that on here? Okay. Hank Finney, Hank Finney, Ruben Solis, or Salas, Ruben Salas, Journey Escobedo, custody. Stevie Stokes, Stevie Stokes, Madison Delosier, Joe Hernandez, custody, MC Reed, custody, Angel Gonzalez is at 11, Julian Martinez, custody, Marcelo Flores Jr., Marcelo Flores Jr., Esperanza Bosquez, Anthony Alves, custody. Oliver Gregory, custody. Just one moment. Torrance Knowles. Aaron Bawani. Christopher Acosta. Christian Smith. Hank Finney, Alex Espinoza, Renee Torres, Raymond Amaya, Alfredo Lugo, Eduardo Lopez Tovar, Hank Maldonado, Adrian Harper, Christopher Acosta, uh, thank you. You're on the docket twice. Larry Evans. Hank Finney. Ruben Salas. Stevie Stokes. Marcelo Flores. Esperanza Bosquez. Anyone who came in late or your name was not called. All right, everyone. We're starting up a jury trial at 11. Not at 11.01. At 11. Anyone, if your case is not resolved or your attorney is not here by then, you're going to be back here in the afternoon. Everyone, if you have a client who's in custody, request them. We have a number of inmates today. So request your inmate. Do not leave the courtroom once your inmate has been requested, because for security reasons, there's a limited number of inmates that can be brought out. So everyone, it's Friday Eve or as we like to stay here now that AT&T is down, the zombie apocalypse may be upon us. So put a smile on your face, enjoying your heart, because we're closer to Friday than we were yesterday. Everyone, please confer. Are we ready? We're ready? Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> there were, me too. There were people who did not know what to do as far as how to find directions to places because their GPS was down. And so, and you know, there's a map at the hotel, right? And the map is one of those touristy maps. So you can see everything. People are still asking, where's the Henry B. Gonzalez Center? No, they don't. You know, my- I my, still have one of those books though. I'm, yeah. My mom and my brothers taught me how to read a map so I can read a map. Can I drive a stick shift? No, oh. but it should be easy to learn. Yes, it's a little, it's yes, a little please take me. And once you get it, it's like, well, let me just tell you. So I learned how to drive on an automatic, right? And my mom was trying to teach me. When I first started driving the automatic, I would use two feet. My mom was like, what are you doing? There's only one foot. And so um, she told me to use uh, one foot. So I think if I would have started with the two, I would have been ready to go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah.
doing this all along. Yeah. Okay. But I still sold here. So I can't find it No. All right. I'm going to do it. All right. Thank you. And let me see, there are two cases that Michael Delion is on. Uh, can I see the file on Andrew Arnett? And Christian Smith. Arnett Rickard? Yes. It's on the one for uh, yeah, thank you. And then the other one, no, I have Arnett. The other one I need is Smith, uh, Christian Smith, Andrew Arnett. Come forward. Excuse me. Uh, that's going to be recalled for March 7th. If you could do a reset for him. If you do have a set for make sure you do turn it off. There's no talking, you need to take some time. You can go out right and use your phone and talk back. Are you on it? Stand right here. Make sure you do speak loud and clear, sir. Thank you so much. Hi. Hi. All right. All right. Your attorney is out of county. So your case is going to be reset for March 7th. Okay. All right. So make sure you're here March 7th at 9 a.m. And on that day, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, so once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Christian Smith. Hello. Hello. Hi, why were you late for court? I was trying to find parking, so I took my spot. I ran all the way over here. All right, so here's the thing. You've been in this court before. You cannot be late. You got to make sure that you're here and pad your timing for parking and everything else. You understand? Yes. All right, your attorney is uh, out of county. So we're going to recall you for March 7th, okay? And how's your mom doing? She's doing better. All right, don't put stress on her. You understand? Yes. All right, uh, just have a seat. They're gonna call you up with your reset form, okay? Uh, it's Christian Smith. I'll give you the file. Oh, 
Okay. 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 Yes. Uh, could I have the file on MC Reed, please? All right, thank you. Okay. I didn't get that part of the R's. Okay. All right, and Joseph, we're starting up the trial at 11. Okay. I'm not leaving. Okay. Daniel Ramirez. He did. Okay. All right, that one's done. Uh, Zach, yes, if you can review that and see if you have any objections, otherwise we'll set it for a hearing. Thank you. All right, thank you. Oh, Your Honor, and I call this is oh no, all is <laughs> okay. Oh. Yes. I appreciate it. Yes. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. information Garcia, 
That's for Metro. Yeah, I'm going to go first. We got out of the hospital. So I think it's Oh, my bad. Secondly, I had a guy that I got appointed on yesterday. Been in jail five and a half months. Diana. Diana. On these, do y'all normally sign these beforehand before submitting them or no? No, I mean, do, does the court reporter ever sign off? Okay. Okay. No, I just wondered if a court reporter had to sign that this is true and correct. Okay. Because I couldn't remember if you did that. This gentleman yesterday has a young man. Oh, yeah. Where are we? You can't stay away. You can't. 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 You can't.
uh, your attorney, Mr. Gold, has filed a motion to withdraw. Do you have any objections to that? All right. Are you going to be able to afford an attorney or would you like one appointed? Um, I'd like one appointed. Okay. All right. We're going to take that matter up then. And then I'll sign the motion to withdraw. Just have a seat and we'll get an attorney for you. Okay. Yes. All right. Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. All right, and Charles. Yes. Uh, she will give you the information. Who does he have? Kennedy. 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 Oh, thank you. Good morning, you. Good morning. Always good to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. I can't complain. Good. How's mom? Oh, mom is doing great. Although the phone services are down. I know. She yeah. can't see us today. No, she can because she's with Comcast. But, oh, okay. um, you know, the AT&T is down. So, yeah, young people, I don't think they'll be able to survive. <laughs> you know, there are people uh, today walking around. They don't have GPS. <laughs> <laughs> All right, could I see James Michael Kennedy, please? Well, before you start, may I get my case reset? I'll start in trial at 10 o'clock. Okay. All right, who is the. I'll come to the case. He's getting the file. I'm oh, sorry. I hate to. All right. Oh, no, no, no. Just give us two minutes, counsel. I want to get him out. Yeah. Oh, I would too. Jim. <laughs> Johnny and I go away. That's, right. that's why I'm here. My wife got me out too. <laughs> Gabriel Almanza Vacara, come forward. Would you like me to step aside? Oh, just uh, step to this side. <laughs> All right, counsel. We're going to recall. We're going to recall your client for March 7th. March 7th. Let me see. Yes, ma'am. All right. So we'll have you back on March 7th, okay? Uh, oh, let me ask you. Can you ask your client, is he a citizen or no? Is this your no, no ma'am. All right. And so he's going to need an immigration attorney. All right. I, I, I'll talk to one. All right. Thank, okay, you. thank you. All right. So thank if you. he'll remain in court, they're going to give him a reset. So uh, yes, ma'am. All right, so on that one, can you give him a reset form for March 7th? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, now we're ready on Kennedy. Yes, sir. State, are you ready? Your Honor, the state is ready. All right, uh, the court is going to call 2023 CR 4168 State of Texas versus James Michael Kennedy. And defense, if y'all could move to that end. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Is that done for the state, Your Honor? Defense. Uh, Anton Hayek. What did you ask me to do again? No, I'm asking your name. Anton Hayek. But they yeah. told me to move one way. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Hayek, for the record, is representing Mr. Kennedy. And are you James Michael Kennedy? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You entered a plea to the offense of assault, intentionally knowing serious bodily uh, injury of a child by omission. You entered a plea to a cap of 35 years in the prison. The state is opposing your application. Have both parties had a chance to review uh, the PSI report state? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? I've had a chance to review it. I've reviewed it with my client and given an opportunity to read it at his own pace. Okay. All right. Any objections to the PSI report state? Uh, no, Your Honor. Defense, any no, objections? No, Your Honor. All right, state any witnesses. Uh, no witnesses, Your Honor. Defense, any witnesses? Mr. Kennedy, please. All right, Mr. Kennedy, if you can raise your right hand for me, please. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record, please. My name is James Michael Kennedy. All right, counsel. Mr. Kennedy, would you say this event with your daughter finding it out about cerebral palsy? and having to remove from your presence because of lack of proper nutrition was a real eye-opener to you? It was. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Could everyone please whisper? And counsel, if you could speak up for me, please. And during the first 10 years of Michelle's life, did you think there was anything unusual about her not being able to eat solid foods? Well, other than that, she probably should have. Uh, given her state with cerebral palsy, I, I, I didn't know. And the primary caretaker, Michelle, was Norma, is that correct? Yes, sir. And you were with Norma, you're not married to her? Yes, sir. Did Norma ever have any complaints to you about something she wasn't allowed to do for Michelle? No, sir. Okay. And uh, you've read the report and you're happy with Miss. I can't do the name. Sit to the, the foster mother. Yes, sir. Okay. And I read you the expert. Do you agree with what she wrote? Yes, sir. I do. Okay. And do you want the best for your daughter? I do. Yes, sir. And you've had a hearing in CPS court on Valentine's Day where you gave an affidavit of relinquishment of your parental rights? Yes, sir. I did. Okay. Um, so do you feel sorry for what you either did or failed to do for your daughter? At, at the time, I, I wasn't aware, but yes, I do. Okay. So you realize the judge is probably going to send you to prison? Yes, I do. Are you asking for something maybe in the 20-year range as opposed to 35? I, I am asking for leniency. Okay. No further questions. That's a prospect. You may want to ask you something. All right, in just a moment, my email went down. I did have the PSI report up, but the PSI report has disappeared on my system. All right. Yes, yes sir, just a few, if I may. Mr. Kennedy, my name is Zach Dunn. I'm one of the prosecutors in the Family Violence Division. Uh, I should have a few questions for you. And uh, some of it goes to your statements in the, the PSI, which is the report that the judge is looking at right now. You basically mentioned uh, on kind of the last page of it that you really kind of didn't know or, or were unsure of the fact. You said you had ignorance of your daughter's condition. Uh, she was diagnosed with cerebral palsy at, at birth, though, correct? I do not know. Um, with respect to her abilities, things she was able to do, did you notice any kind of comparison between her and other 10-year-olds? <laughs> Um, actually, comparison between her and uh, when I was going through high school, I noticed that 
uh, there were children that were similar. And are you aware of how much she weighed as a 10 year old when the police came to the residence for the first time? Um, I believe she was at 27 pounds, but I can't remember. 27 pounds as a 10 year old. Does that seem normal to you or abnormal to you? Uh, I do not know. I mean, when I look at, when I believe, remember how there were other others that were her age, more or less, even and when I was going through high school, I saw that they were about her size. Uh, you're saying when you went through high school personally, you when know, I went through high school, you knew of 10 year olds that were around 20 pounds in weight or we went to uh, the kitchen cafeteria and I saw others that were uh, rolled around in wheelchairs that were about the same size. Um, and what did you make of the fact that Michelle, again, a 10 year old was unable to speak and barely even move when the police first interacted with her coming on scene? Is that normal behavior you think for a 10 year old? I think given that she had cerebral palsy that it was normal. And with respect to her diet, do you think it's appropriate to feed someone Oreos, milk and Kool-Aid to sustain their life as a 10 year old with cerebral palsy? Michelle could not eat solid, so she couldn't even eat Oreos. Okay, but at the time, does it surprise you or is it surprising to hear now that y'all statements at the time on scene was that again, you fed her Kool-Aid, milk and Oreos? At uh at that time, uh, given that Numa was taking to her to the the doctors, and that the doctors were aware of what was going on, I thought everything was okay. Uh, given that now, I know that it's not okay because that could have all been avoided with uh, the surgery of a G tube, uh, gastrostomy tube. You said you know about that now. I do. So if police had never come and CPS was never involved, what do you think the future of Michelle's life would look like? Again, at the time she weighed 27 pounds as a 10 year old, that was a few years ago. Well, she did lose a lot of weight due to her being sick. Uh, it wasn't due to lack of us providing nutrition. It was due to her being sick that she lost weight. No further questions, Ron. All right, That's any follow-up? A follow up. All right. May I ask a question? Please. All right. Why was she never placed back in school? Uh, when she was originally taken out of school due to uh, the coronavirus. All right. And, and then after that, we attempted to take her back to school. Uh, she could never keep the mask on. She would keep constantly pulling it off. And then they told her to no longer go back to school. I'm sorry, what? They told her not to go back to school until she could take care of that. Okay. And I'm sorry, I'm trying to find the trial court certification form. Just one second. I'll have it. All right. So you're saying that they didn't allow her to come back to school because she continued to pull off her mask. Yes, ma'am. And the offense date on this is 2023. So help me, in 2023, were students still required to wear a mask? I, I do not know, Your Honor. All right, so you didn't take her back to school in the year of 2023? No, Your Honor. And I read the PSI report, and it said that you had personal insurance? I did. Oh, I did. All right, so at that time, you had personal insurance, correct? Yes, Your Honor. How often had she seen a doctor? I believe the last time she saw the doctor was in 2020. And I believe it was on a either annual or a due annual uh, checkup. Mm -hmm. I left that all to Norma to take care of. All right. So the last time she saw a doctor was in 2020. Yes, I believe so. So did your wife, Norma, have the insurance card to take her to her doctor? No, Your Honor. All right, so Norma's you had the- wife, uh, they just lived together. All right, so the person you lived with, were you in a romantic relationship with them? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And were you all living together as boyfriend and girlfriend or husband and wife? 
Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so you left her in charge of taking care of your child? Yes, Your Honor. And is she the biological mother of that child? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So you didn't give her your insurance card to take her to the doctor for emergencies? I never was issued one. Uh, everything was done electronic. All right. So since 2020, you never took your child to the hospital, emergency rooms, or to see a pediatrician? Uh, personally, I haven't. I do not know what Norma has done. All right. Did you ever ask her, hey, she's not eating right, something's going wrong? Have you taken her to the doctor? Uh, this will actually all happen recent, like because she got sick because of everything that happened. Uh, we took her to the hospital to Krista Santa Rosa at first. And when was that? Was that in 2023? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I'm talking about before 2023. Unless, and if I'm wrong, correct me. And I won't take offense to you correcting me. It appears that this is something that was happening over time. Am I right? The fact that she's not gaining weight, she's not eating? No, Your Honor. Um, the way we were uh, giving her nutrition over the time period uh, from her birth until the time that she got sick was the same constant method. Okay. And then all of a sudden she gets sick and, and she lost the weight. So what was her highest weight? Because this is saying that she was 27 pounds as 10, at 10. So before she started dropping all of the weight, what was her weight as a 10-year-old? I believe it was either at 40 or 45 pounds. So 45 pounds, and then all of a sudden she's at 27 pounds. Yes, Your Honor. So you didn't think to take her to the doctor when she dropped down to 30 pounds? Um, I would be at work. So um, when I would come home, I'd always want to try to sleep or relax just before sleeping. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and how far did you go in school? Uh, for school, I graduated from St. Phillips College. Okay. I got my certificates for aircraft and power plant. All right. Thank you. Any other questions, defense? No, you are. State, any other questions? No, you are. All right. The court will, will hear argument. Uh, the state is opposed to the application. State. Your Honor, this is an individual that uh, essentially the state doesn't believe has taken responsibility. The litany of I don't knows and I'm not sure. This doesn't replace the fact that you're talking about a 10 year old who had, as the medical facility diagnosed her with, quote, extreme prolonged malnourishment. 10 year olds are somewhere in the range of above 70 pounds. This is a 27 pound individual who, through the defendant's own words, was fed Oreos, Kool Aid, and milk. As if being a child wasn't a vulnerable enough position to be in in the world, to be diagnosed with cerebral palsy at birth and have parents that don't take you because their insurance quote uh, has expired and um, knew about the, well, first they knew about the diagnosis, but then they didn't know about the diagnosis that they later said. Um, the state would, of course, respectfully request uh, that you know the court take all these factors into consideration um, given how this person um, completely disregarded the health uh, of a young girl uh, for many years on end, Your Honor. All right, defense. This case has a certain horribleness factor, especially to me as a parent. I can't imagine not feeding your child. And this is my second sentencing on this crime, that crime in a week. Yes. So I didn't know that many people weren't feeding their child. In representing my client, he's basically been clueless. I've had a very difficult time getting to him to understand what he did or did not do and what he should have done or should not have done. Uh, that doesn't condone what happened to his daughter. One thing I don't understand is how she went to health care providers and no one noticed anything, especially on the day in which she was taken to a health care provider a second time, and that's when she was taken into police custody, CPS custody. Okay. okay, and you have terminated your parental rights. Is that correct, sir? Yes. Okay. That's it, John. All right. One final question. So, what were you eating? I would eat out a lot. Okay. And did your weight ever drop at normally low? No, Your Honor. 
and if and how much did you weigh? Uh, before I was at 277. All right. So if your weight went from 277 down to 100 pounds or 90 pounds, would you go to the doctor? I would find out what's going on. Yes. Okay. All right. The court is going to deny your application. The court will find you guilty. Uh, I understand that there may have been other issues at play here as far as maybe the mother was in charge of taking care of your daughter and during the day to day. So I am taking that into consideration. I'm going to sentence you to 34 years in the prison. Give you credit for any time served. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with the complainant. There's to be uh, no unsupervised contact with minors. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Uh, which one? That's it. Yes, Judge. All right. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. We can go off the record. Mr. Kennedy, I understand that you're probably um, hurt by what happened to your daughter. I do understand that. But children are 100% dependent upon adults. They're dependent on them to feed them. They're dependent on them to clothe them and for them to be educated. And you can't say your responsibility, I'm just outside working, somebody else is taking care of my daughter and I'm not noticing anything. You understand? I understand, Your Honor. And I, I wish I, I did really know what was going on. Like when... CPS came by, my caseworker, she gave me all this paperwork mm -hmm. and I was reviewing it. It was at that moment that I understood okay. the, the, the level of yeah. care that she she demanded that she needed. All right. Well, good luck to you. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thank you. Please, please. Yes. Thank you. Veronica Alvarez, are you all ready to proceed? All right, court is calling 2022 CR 9445, State of Texas versus Veronica Alvarez. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Bonk, if you could move him down there. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? And Jason, your hand, your Honor. Defense? Joe, so state sin standing in for Joanne, sorry, for Joanne de Hoyos. And are you Veronica Alvarez? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objection to this attorney standing in? for Joanne de Hoyos. No. All right, you're gonna to need to keep your voice up. I'm gonna show you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Veronica Alvarez who was placed on deferred adjudication for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, less than one gram on March 30th, 2023 for a period of three years, is that you? Yes, Your Honor. State. Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number five, Ender County, Texas. The defendant, Veronica Alvarez, defendant there failed to report to the supervision officer as directed for the months of June 2023, July 2023, August 2023. Violation of condition number five. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. State? Yes, Your Honor. It's the agreement between the. Uh, do you waive the remaining allegations? Yes, yes, we do waive the remaining violated conditions. Any objections? None. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number five, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, and sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number five? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number five true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is a proposed agreement, Your Honor. That's adjudicate guilt. Revoke the individual. Well, office, yeah, we are on the record. Revoke or offer her probation pursuant to 1244 to assess 112 days in the Bear County Jail. All right. Uh, you, you may take a seat and continue to confer. Uh, is that the agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Are you waiving your right to appeal? Yes, Your Honor. All right. The court will find violation of condition number five true. 
Uh, probation, are you in agreement with revocation for Ms. Veronica Alvarez? The court will find you guilty, sentence you to 112 days in the Bear County Jail under 1244. Give you credit for any time served. I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement. And because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right. We can go off the record. If you have a drug or alcohol problem, which it appears that you do, you are always able to have free services here in Bear County to help you with that. If you feel like you can't find a place to help you with that, guess what? You can always come back here, even though you're not on probation, and I will give you resources so you can get help with that. Do you understand? Yes. Ron. All right. Good luck to you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Okay. Camillus Galvan. Uh, no, he can go back. Mr. Reed, good luck to you. Thank you. All right. If you need anything, let the court know, okay? Yes, I appreciate everything. Uh, uh, all right. Take advantage of it, okay? Yeah, all right. All right. Camillus Galvan. The plea deadline date was on February 8th, but then we were recalling it uh, for today. Where are we? Your Honor, if I may, uh, I believe today's setting was regarding a uh, motion, our defense's motion to appoint a reconstruction expert. Defense is requesting um, $2,500 for an accident reconstruction expert. All right. Did you all follow motion? Yes, ma'am. Let me see. Uh, to the clerk, can you pull that motion for me? Oh, wait a minute. I do have it. I'm sorry. Thank you. It's hidden under other paperwork. We have had a setting in between. Oh, actually, that was appointed. That expert was appointed on January 22nd oh. for $3,000. And it was not to exceed the $3,000. The only issue was I could not write in someone's name because you all didn't have someone's name. But it is in here. Motion for appointment of an expert. Yes, Your Honor. Um, Palacios Reconstruction Expert. It, Palacios Reconstruction is, is um, who we use. Yes, so I approved the motion for appointment of an expert for 3000 Thank you, Your Honor. I apologize. No problem. Uh, on this case, can I have a, a one-month reset, please? No, I'm sorry. Make it 45 days. At that time, you need to have spoken to your expert, and then it's going to be a quick turnaround date for a plea deadline date, and then perhaps jury trial date. Yes, ma'am. We'll be ready. Um, if I may, uh, Palacios Accident Reconstruction LLC is who we, we use. Okay. Please. All right. Thank you. All right. We're going to come back on April 4th. Once you sign the reset form, you are excused. Thank you, Your Honor. Very You're much welcome. Appreciate. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. All right, who is here on Madison Delosier? I am, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Delosier, come forward. It's, it's an obvious. Yes. Oh. 
All right, this is a request to travel. Is there any objection to the travel? Uh, I'm just now conferring with the uh, defense on this. I think we would judge do the nature of the offense. All right, do you have a copy of your motion? No. Yes, I do. Miss, uh -huh. thank Miss you. Lean on to the rescue. Mm -hmm. All right, she wants to travel to Vegas for her honeymoon. Congratulations on the wedding. Okay, I, I'm conferring with uh, probation on this judge, and I, I think if we could do uh, uh, either an alcohol patch or a drug or alcohol test when she gets back, I think that would uh, take care of our concerns. All right, I don't know if they're able to. Are they, is the does the patch test for alcohol? I don't think it does. I could be very wrong on that. No, so the patch doesn't test for alcohol. So April 5th, what day of the week is that? It's a Monday, Monday, Monday to Friday, according to my client. All right, when are you coming back on Friday? Um, It would be an early flight both of them so we haven't booked it yet we've looked into it all right so you need to be back here on friday to take a alcohol test and other than that is everybody agree with her to travel for a honeymoon yes sir. all right secondary item uh just... but you probably i'm not sure if we put it in i'm sorry i'll wait for you no 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 i guess it'd be more fair to say that we would leave it in your hands judge rather than that we agree okay <laughs> Hank's going to stop talking. And not change. All right. So secondary issue. I don't know if we detailed in the motion. Um, she has had a portable device this whole time. She's been doing very well this whole time. Uh, she is now eligible to receive her actual TDL back. The only way she can get it back, though, is with the ignition interlock requirement. So I'm asking the court to allow her to switch from her portable to an ignition interlock requirement, allowing her to get her TDL back, Judge. All right, state. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any objections to her switching or uh, probation switching from portable to ignition interlock? I would like some more time, Judge. I don't think uh, defense counsel has spoken to probation about this or us. So, uh, all right. I'd like some time to uh, talk about this. One. Counsel, when she comes back, you'll have to file a motion for that. So, okay. We'll hear it at that time. Thank you, Judge. All right, and you're to do a UA upon your return on April uh, 5th. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. All right, is there anything else? No, ma'am. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, I'll take care of it. Hank Finney. Your client was late, although I saw him in the elevator. I was he, he, Your Honor, I, I think it explained to him he came, but the, the door was locked. He had to go to the restroom really badly. He goes to the restroom and he comes back and he calls the doctor. So All he right, he, he can't be late. So that's that's the end of that. So on February 22nd today is the plea deadline date. Is he accepting the offer or not? No, he's not accepting the offer. All right, state. Yes, Your Honor. How long do you think this trial will last? Uh, Finney, Your Honor? Yes. Two days. All right. Excellent. All right, so let me see. I'm thinking probably three days, Judge, not four. Be honest with you. All right. Yeah. Uh, family violence, are you all up the week of March 11th? I believe that's correct, Judge. All right. Could you recall this from March 11th? All right. Jury trial, March 11th. 
Have a great day. And you always dress appropriately for court. I appreciate that. So they'll, they'll give you a reset form. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. All right. And can you call an interpreter up? Yolanda Coughlin? Your Honor, uh, on this case, we well, just one second. I was just saying, do you need an interpreter or no? Um, not really, because we're just going to ask for a reset. She hasn't been contacted well, by the then, immigration attorney. Let me stop you. Then I'm putting you in the order in which I receive your file. So just give me a moment. Okay. You'll be up. Nathan Cruz. Good morning. Where is Mr. Cruz? I think he's in custody. I'm just here for Stephen Gilmore. He's in trial across the hall. So he asked me if I could just get this case recalled. The trial's been starting at 1.30 every day, but the morning has started at 9, so he was a little taken off. Okay. Off. So if it could just be recalled for next week. All right. This is going to be recalled for uh, March 7th. Uh, it's Nathan Cruz. He's in custody. <clears throat> All right, thank you. Good seeing you. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. I didn't want to deny her her honeymoon. Ah, okay, thank you. Sarah Gutierrez. All right, where are we on the evaluation? Have you completed your evaluation? Yes, Your Honor. Right. And when was that completed on January 17th? Yes, Your Honor. All right, counsel, do you have the report from the doctor? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, we conducted a, uh, a hearing as well with Judge Carruthers. Uh, she was found competent. Okay. So we are moving forward. However, I did discuss with uh, Mr. Escobar, who was the attorney for the state earlier today, um, because there are still some present mental health concerns with Ms. Uh, Gutierrez, although she is competent, um, he and I are trying to uh, determine the best uh, outcome on this case in terms of resolution. He's wanting to reach out to uh, his complainant in this case, as well as the complainant in her county court case, mm -hmm. uh, to see if we can come to some sort of resolution on these matters. We're requesting a, a plea deadline if possible in the case. All right. We're going to do uh, your plea deadline date is going to be March 7th on uh, Sarah Gutierrez. It's going to be March 7th for a plea deadline date. Uh, just have a seat. They'll call you when for her to come up and sign the reset form. Yes, Judge. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That's fine, Judge. Who do you have? That, that motion, that little BPH. Oh. Well, first we have oh, Joseph Shubiak. I'm, I'm, I haven't, I'm, they're reviewing that file on Mr. Shubiak, so okay. I don't have anything on that yet. All right. That's also mine. All right. I'd like to ask you a question off the record somewhere if I could. All right. If you want to come around this yeah. way. Everyone, just give me two minutes. Yeah, Amaya. And everyone, please whisper. I know we're busy today in court, but everyone, please whisper. 
Raymond Amaya. Come forward, Raymond Amaya. Council President. All right, where's your client? I have not had any contact with you. Now. I um, was appointed approximately two weeks ago, Your Honor, uh, and I have not been able to. Uh, All right, if you'll switch sides. Oh. Court is going to call 2024 CR 0840, State of Texas versus Raymond Xavier Amaya. Could our parties announce for the record for the state? Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense? Ron Zimmerman, Your Honor. All right. This hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now 10.02 a.m. The court will note for the record that a warrant has been issued for your client and cause number 2022 CR 2566. Your client is not present for court today. Have you had contact with your client? No, I have not. Your Honor. All right. State? State's requesting a bond overture, Your Honor. All right. And did you announce in the hallway for and the result? No, he was not there. Not present. All right. The court will grant the motion for a bond forfeiture. The court will remand your client without bond. If your client makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Yolanda Kaufman. All right, and where is Ms. Kaufman? She's right there. She's in custody. All right, Ms. Kaufman, if you'll come down. She's a Spanish speaker, but we wanted to ask the court was we had we had appointed an uh, immigration attorney to discuss the case with her. I conveyed the offer, but the immigration attorney hasn't contacted her yet. So what I wanted to do is Get a reset so she could who is the immigration attorney i don't know i don't know all i know is there was an appointment made and i don't know all right and she'll have a seat we're going to call an interpreter down because she needs to know what's being said okay. all right thank you thank you as soon as the interpreter is here we'll take it up thank you judge is there a way i could find the name i've called the immigration attorney let me see Yes. And that's a number for you only, not for your client, because that's a cell number. I understand. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Who's here on Ruben Salas? Ruben Salas? Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Kramer, who do you have? Judge, I've got Joe Hernandez. This is um, the state with the video on it. And I'm hearing I'm a hearing bit. All right. Do we have an update on the video? Uh, yes, ma'am. Our witness should be on Zoom. All right. They are. Okay. Uh, What's the name of the defendant? Joe uh, Hernandez, Jim. Judge. Uh, witnesses. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We asked for the defendant's name or the witness's name. Oh, the defendant's name. Oh, okay. Yes, ma'am. Can I see uh, the file on Joe Hernandez, please? Yes. All right, and is the witness on Zoom for Joe Hernandez, please? Witness. 
All right, the person for iPhone, who is this? Is this your client? All right, we're waiting for the uh, state's witness, Ms. Kramer. No problem, Judge, I can wait. I can just sit, I'll mute and work on other stuff. Thank you. There's somebody from iPhone, but I don't know who that is. Oh, with it, they um, are not saying anything, Judge? No. Let me see if I can have Rose uh, uh, text him. Okay, Judge. thank you. Who's here on Carbell Mayfield? Judge, I am, and we're about three minutes from being ready. All right, Kelly, P Kelly Piddle for Stevie Stokes. You're on a motion to release the cell phone and then the then the other thing. How much money do you need? Uh eleven seventy. I think it's in the other motion. Okay. Uh that is Mr. Stokes. Mr. Stokes, I need you to show your video. Sorry, man. That's okay. Okay. okay, with regards to the expert, of course, I'll take care of that. All right, uh, is this family balance? Mr. Dunn. Okay, I have the same motion filed several times. I'm assuming it's the same thing. I think so. Maybe I. Yeah, I have it filed three yeah. times. It might be my copy in there as well, Judge. All right. All right. The the only thing then we're here for would be the re request for discovery and inspections. Correct. It's, uh, we're asking that the cell phone that was my client's that was seized uh, be released to my client. Uh, we believe it contains Brady Evans. All right. So I don't know if the state wants to release that, but your expert will be allowed to review it. Sure. It's it's not. It's more Brady and mitigation evidence for us. Um, and the state is opposed to us getting it back. Um, well, I, I, if they are keeping it as evidence, I don't know anything about this case, but I will say this, that your expert, if you have an expert who wants to review the contents of the phone or extract the contents of the phone, I'm going to allow that. But as far as screening over the phone, I don't know anything about your case to see whether or not it should be turned over if the state is saying it's evidence. Okay. So is the court going to allow us to go and inspect it and to take items from the phone? Well, you can extract, I would say copy. Okay. So whatever your expert wants to copy. And if there's an issue with that, you let the court know. All right. Okay. Um, okay. So will the court put in the order that it allows us to inspect the phone? Yes, I will. And you don't have an order attached. Ah, here we go. All right. And then what we're going to do is we're going to recall this case and counsel. It's going to be recalled to make sure that you all have all the information. So if we can put this in the 
first week in April. Uh, what date? All right, so we're gonna recall this for April 9th and I will put it as discovery and your client can appear by Zoom. Yes, I can. Okay. All right. And so, uh, State, are there any objections to the defense being allowed to inspect, you know, have their expert ins inspect and copy items contained within the phone? No, Your Honor. The, the only, and I, limit, I think this is more tangential as opposed to directly related to the, the order, but I just heard from the, the prosecutor kind of more handily in the case. Uh, that I know council's been in communication with, but they said that the cell phone was seized by police, search warrant granted, um, only they don't have the download completed yet of the dump because we don't have the code. So that's the most recent update I have as of 10, 11 a.m. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna recall it for April 9th, and we'll see where we are on discovery at that time. And if there's an issue with your expert being allowed to make copies from the phone, just come back sooner or come back on that date and let the court know. But you all are going to have to off dock it. You are probably going to have to coordinate with your expert and whoever they have. Okay. All right. Is there anything else? Nope. All right, Mr. Stokes, you'll be allowed to appear by Zoom. Yes, ma'am. All right. And you're excused. Okay, thank you. All right, and then counsel. So the return of property, that's gonna be denied. And then if you'll put the amounts in here, what you're requesting, that's all. Yeah. All right, could I see the parties on Yolanda Kaufman? Ready, Your Honor. All right, thank you. And then just make sure you get a copy before you leave. All right, if you she's coming in. All right, thank you. All right, um, Ms. Kaufman. So my understanding is you do need to speak to an immigration attorney because you're a resident. Uh, defense has been given information for the immigration attorney. And we are going to recall this case in April for you to have time to speak uh, with the immigration attorney. Do you understand? Yes. All right. So can we call recall this in April as well, please? Yes, that's fine. All right. We're going to come back on April 8th. April 8th. And, Thank you, Judge. Yes. And counsel, if there is no, more time needed for the expert, just let the court know. But please reach out to her today. I will, Judge. I'll call her today. Okay. Excuse your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Norma. You're welcome, Arun Bawani. All right, why were you late for court today? 
My brother to drop his kids at school, so he can't pick me up a little bit late. All right, you cannot be late for court, you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, so state, where are we on the school records from Ohio? Yes, Your Honor, I uh, recently checked the database notes for the DA's office, and I have most recent note that I showed counsel, very top is from the victim advocate noting that uh, the records have been uploaded to e-discovery for defense counsel's viewing, so we should be in compliance with discovery. And, Your Honor, the only issue I have with that, and it's not an issue, it's just a comment, uh, if I could have all the discovery on a thumb drive, if I could be allowed just to go to the DA's office, see any updates, I'm fine with that. All right, so counsel, then you all need to confer and you'll need to bring the thumb drive to the state. Do you understand? Sure. All right, and state, did you tender an offer? An offer has been tendered in this case, Your Honor. That's that has been. And it's not changed since the inception, Your Honor. All yeah. right, and there are no immigration issues, right? There are not any immigration issues. All right. Uh, one thing that I wanted to add no, yes. is that Mr. Bolani was on a pretrial GPS, excuse me, a partial GPS, allowing him to get some work. Uh, for some reason, that was rescinded, and we're just asking that that be reimposed as far as the, for work purposes. All right. If you set a hearing for that, I will hear okay. it. All right. On this case, can I have a 30 day reset for a plea deadline date, please? All right, March 28th. On March 28th, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? No. All right, once you sign the reset form, you're excused, and then your attorney can come back and we'll address the other issue. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. All right. Do I have that file? I believe I do. I think it's located. Okay. Uh, Eduardo Lopez. And where is Tobar? All right. So is your client a citizen? He is on a resident, uh, on a resident visa, a tourist visa, excuse me. So we are asking for a reset. He has um, two DWIs pending that I do not represent him on. I don't know the status of those cases. He has court coming up. Um, when do you have court, sir? And say the matter. March 6th. I'm March 6th. And I also want him to consult with an immigration attorney since he is on a tourist visa that expires in a couple of months. All right. Does he have an immigration attorney or does he need one appointed? No. No. All right. And are you appointed counsel? Oh, I am. All right. Could we see if Mac has an immigration attorney available for him? Otherwise, it'll be Teresa Coz Davila. Okay, so before you leave, make sure you get that. How are we on discovery? All right. Could I have a 30 day reset, please? It's the permit that is going to expire, not the visa. Right. Okay. And for that reason, I want you to talk to the immigration attorney and the court's going to give you one. Oh, sure. All right. We're going to be back on March 28th. Again, before you leave, speak uh, with them to see if Mac can have an immigration attorney appointed for him. If not, it will be Teresa Coz Davila. Great, thank you. Your Honor. All right, thank you. Do you have any questions? Not at this time, thank you. No. All right, you're excused. Thank you. Mayfield. Yes, she did. Here you go. Could I see the parties on Tamar McIntyre? Yes, if you can call them. Sure. And if they can't, then Teresa Coz Davila. All right. Today is the plea deadline date. So is the plea being accepted? Rejected, Your Honor. All right, so we'll need a jury trial date. I'm gonna recall this.
We're going to recall this for March 11th. And at that time, you will be given your jury trial date. Okay. Thank you, that, Judge. That'll work, Jerome. All right. So uh, if you all can make sure you recur, uh, confer off docket to see what's a good date that works for everybody's schedule. I don't do special settings in this court, but I will take co in consideration the fact that it's a date that you all have decided on. That'd be great. We, we will confer. All right. All right. If there's nothing else, then you all excuse. Thank you, Thank Judge. You, Judge. Take care. Thank you. And that's on McIntyre. Yeah. You're welcome. Carball Mayfield. Who are the parties on Carball Mayfield? Move with the purpose. <laughs> I know no other way to move, Judge. Okay. All right. Court is calling 2018 CR 11671, State of Texas versus Carball Mayfield. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Deerhan, your honor. Defense. Ted Wood for Mr. Mayfield. Are you Mr. Mayfield? Are you Mr. Mayfield? Yes. Going to show you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Carval Carey Mayfield who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2018 CR 11671 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group two, four grams to 400 grams on April 29th, 2019 for a term of four years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. State. Yes, Your Honor. Violated condition number two on or about the 27th day of April, 2022, the Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Carvel Carey Mayfield, the denominator failed to submit to drug testing as directed by the supervision officer in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Your Honor, we'll waive the remaining violation of condition. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine? Yes. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is, Your Honor. And what are you all requesting? Uh, to uh, deny the motion, continue the individual on his deferred referred to felony drug court with a two-year uh, detention on his deferred and judge if that's if he's not accepted in the felony drug court uh, it's an agreement that he will be sent to safety with an extension of two years all right is that the agreement yes it is judge are you asking the court to follow that agreement yes ma'am are you waiving your right to appeal yes ma'am all right you know yourself better than i do better than your attorney does and better than the state or probation does uh, if you want to be continued on probation, I will continue you. Otherwise, if you wish, I will revoke you and sentence you to four years. Which do you prefer? No, he declines the offer for TDC, Judge, but thanks you very much for offering it. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. No problem. All right. The court is finding violation of condition number two true. The court will deny the motion, alter and amend conditions for an extension of two years, a referral to felony drug court. Uh, do we need an updated TAP probation? Uh, TAP in custody. And if not accepted in felony drug court, uh, then safety. All right, we're off the record. Mr. Mayfield, you gotta make a decision in your life. And your decision is, do you want to go to prison? No, ma'am, I do not. All right, then you need to start acting as though you don't want to go to prison by following through on your conditions. You understand? Yes, ma'am. The agreement that the state and the defense came up with, I don't have to follow that because they don't have a contract with you. You have a contract with the court. So if there's an issue, if you're struggling, let the court know and we'll see what we can do to help you. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Who's here on uh, Hillary Stillman? 
Thank you, Judge. Might be excused, Judge. Yes, thank, thank you. you and I'm sure you'll talk to Felony Direct Court. I'm supposed to be there half hour ago. Keep okay. Talking. I'm not sure. I'll check and see. Yes, you did. Okay. No solace. Oh, okay. That's okay. Okay, just give me a moment. Court is calling 2022 CR 9437 State of Texas versus Hillary Matthew Stillman. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. Todd Lester for Mr. Stillman. Are you Mr. Stillman? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Are you the same Hillary Matthew Stillman who was placed on community supervision for the offense of possession of a controlled substance penalty group one, four grams to 200 grams on October 25th, 2022 for a term of five years. Is that you? Yes, ma'am. All right. And state, it's the court's understanding that there is only one violation in the motion. I see that that violation is a long violation to read. Defense, did you read the entire violation of condition number 44 to your client? We did, Your Honor. We went over that, uh, and we're going to be pleading through with an explanation. All right. Any objection to the state just naming the condition as violation of condition number four as opposed to reading out the entire paragraph? None, Your Honor. All right, state. Uh, violated condition number 44, Your Honor. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 44, the court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to five years in the prison? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition 44? Yes, ma'am. Court will find violation of condition number 44 true. Is there a proposed agreement? No, there's not. All right. State, what are you requesting? Revocation. All right. Defense? Your Honor, uh, and we understand the state's position on revocation. Uh, Mr. Steelman already has a plan in place should the court revoke uh, his community supervision for him to get back on his feet once he's released from prison. Uh, he was hoping for a more constructive rehabilitation uh, uh, environment with the safety. That was his mental health and physical health were not addressed uh, properly. Uh, and he's currently being medicated for his mental uh, illness. But uh, we would ask the court to please impose a uh, the, the shortest sentence as possible for the court to limitation is appropriate. All right, Mr. Stillman, the court gives people chances in this court. If you have a drug or alcohol problem, if you have a mental health issue, uh, the court gives that and tries to give that, but also protect the community. It shows in violation of number 44 that I recommended you for treatment and two times you refused to sign that. Uh, the court, as previously stated, is finding violation of condition number 44 true. Court will sentence you to five years in the prison, give you credit for any time served. There's a $1,200 fine, time and money for run concurrent. Did you pay the $57 to uh, Bear County for drug testing? I have not been yet. I've not All right. Been out yet. So there's to be fifty-seven dollars restitution to the Bear County Crime Lab. If you would like, I could recommend the therapeutic community for you at the prison. I have no control over them placing you in that uh, program. It does not increase the length of time that you're in the program. Uh, do you wish to be considered for therapeutic community? Please. All right. And I'll request the therapeutic community. Going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right. This was not a plea bargain agreement. You have a limited right to appeal. That right to appeal is as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you were on community supervision. Do you understand? Yes. All right. Good luck to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Julian Martinez. Okay. All right. We'll recall it. Okay. It's okay. So on Julian Martinez, Shop. can we recall this for March 7th? All right. Uh, we'll bring him back on March 7th. Thank you, Judge. If my phone worked, I would text my office right now, but it's part of the outage. Okay. Right can now. I just tell you what is upon us? 
you, your dreams might be happening right now. No, they're not dreams. I mean, we just need to be prepared. But, you know, uh, as I was leaving the hotel, there are young people who are completely lost. They're like, we don't have GPS. Where's the Henry B. Gonzalez sitter? I'm like, here's a map. <laughs> don't know how to use it. They would not have any concept of how to use that. Can't survive. Yeah, that's funny. Thank you. Oliver, can we do it? Can we recall him for this afternoon? Do you think we can get him ordered for the afternoon? Okay, let's request it for the afternoon. Joe Hernandez. Who's here for Joe Hernandez? That's, uh, Judge, that's, that's my case. All right. All right. Mr. Patel. He's connecting to audio. No, I don't have Christmas so. though. All right, he's still connecting to audio. Mr. Fitzgerald, there might be something you have to click. Oh, there it is. All right, can you unmute? And where's Joe Hernandez? Yeah. Joe Hernandez. He's in custody, Judge. All right. Well, I'm going to have you all confer while we, uh, on this case, the whole issue is regarding a Hotel video, video, Mr. Patel? Uh, yes. All right. I'm ordering for you to turn over the hotel video. Um, so the recording only records for 36 hours, and there's no evidence of that no more. All right. Ms. Kramer, they say they only have it for 36 hours. If you would like for me to issue an order... And in the order, what I can put is I can put a time frame for them to uh, turn over the video for a specific day and a specific time if you would like the court to do that. Judge, it was my understanding, I would love that, but um, it was my understanding from the email that Hank sent me yesterday that it's they only hold it for 36 hours and therefore it has been recorded over. Is my understanding, Hank, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, ma'am. I, I believe that's sorry. I, I believe that's how it works. So, Mr. Patel, is that how it works? It's uh, it records for thirty six hours, and then it starts recording over itself. Yes, it loops around, so the old recording gets deleted automatically. And All right. So, um, Judge, I just would like to inquire on just a couple things, if I may. All right, just one moment, because your client is not here. If you would like to uh -oh. have, a, what I can do, uh, I can put you and Mr. Patel in a breakout room and then have your client br brought up and then I'll put it on the record. Oh, I don't really need to speak to him. It was just some questions I needed to get on the record based on um, the representations of the state. I can wait till you bring Mr. Hernandez out. All right. Uh, Deputy, when you get a chance, can you bring Mr. Hernandez out? It's Joe Hernandez. Thank you. Thank you. All right, just, just give us a moment. Daniel Ramirez. Where is your attorney? All right, just have a seat. Juan Carlos de Jesus. All right, so do you have the video camera from the home? Sorry. Oh, last time we were here, there was a video camera from a home that was needed. We've got a, we got that, Your Honor. Okay. But here's the problem: I was just informed by my client that he is not an American citizen. Uh, okay. He speaks English very well and stuff, but I'm going to request for the record that uh, 
he be assessed by, by an immigration specialist for a Padilla letter. All right. So uh, I'm going to recall this. Can I have a 30 day reset on Juan de Jesus? All right, we're going to come back on March 21st, and you'll need to contact the MAC to get him an immigration attorney. All right, thank you. Is there anything else? Uh, we have an offer. We've already discussed it. Uh, after that, we'll, after we get that, we can probably get a trial setting. All right, thank you. Richard Sosa. I'm sorry, what? Oh, okay, thank you. Who's here on Sean Crisman? All right, Mr. Crisman. Court is calling 2022 CR 4262, State of Texas versus Sean Crisman. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Uh, Jason Garahan. Defense. Greg Gamerey. Are you Sean Crisman? Yes, ma'am. Sean, you what's entitled motion to enter adjudication of guilt and revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Sean Crisman who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2022? CR 4262 for the offense of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group two, four grams to 400 grams on March 20th, 2023 for a period of 10 years. Is that you? Yes, sir. All right, state. Yes, your honor. Violated condition number 23 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Sean Chomsov, by uh, Christmas, did then and there fail to attend the and provide verification of sober meeting, uh, support meetings daily for 90 days in violation of condition number 23. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Your Honor, we'll waiver and make the violation. Any objection? No objection, John. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 23, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine? Yes, sir. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number 23? Yes. Court will find violation of condition number 23 true. Is there a proposed agreement? There's no. All right, state, what are you requesting? Uh, we're requesting that he continue on his deferred and attend safety and remain in jail until uh, that is available. All right, what are you requesting? Your Honor, we're just asking him to be put back in lifetime recovery. Uh, that's where my client would ask him to finish that program. He does have other opportunities for him. All right, Mr. Christman, you have a choice. One, you can be continued, you're going to safe pee, or either I'll sentence you to four years in prison. Which do you prefer? Uh, I guess safe pee. All right, the court will deny the motion, alter and amend conditions. I'm so sorry, before I do that, probation, uh, is this your recommendation for safe pee? All right, the court will deny the motion, alter and amend conditions to include safe pee. He's to remain in custody until transfer. All right, good luck to you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Thank you. Always good seeing you. Good seeing you. Anthony Alves. Uh, did you sign this? <laughs> That's okay. Oh. Good morning. Yeah, thank you. Oops, sorry. And I think this is, oh yeah, this is county court. All right, court is calling 2024 CR 0733 State of Texas versus Anthony Alves, could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Garahan, Your Honor. Defense. Lindsay Chopper, Mr. Alves. I'm appearing for Mr. Oak. 
All right, Mr. Are you Mr. Alves? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any objection to this att attorney standing in for Mr. Bach? Absolutely not. Counsel, have you received all the discovery? Did you review it with your client? Yes, ma'am. And counsel, I know that you have been representing Mr. Alves for less than 10 days. Are you waiving time? Yes, ma'am. You have any objections to them waiving time? No, ma'am. Uh, the court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Show you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, I did. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, I did. Did you understand you're charged with uh, possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, less than one gram? That's a state jail felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes. Mr. Alvis, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, ma'am. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, I did. According to the plea, the state is requesting that your punishment be assessed at 210 days under 1244. There are no applications. They're taken in consideration. County court cause number 720011. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Uh, yes, Your Honor. However, we are asking the court to consider, uh, as of today, our client has 123 days in the Bear County Jail. He is a trustee and he's been working double time shifts, so back-to-back -back shifts daily. We're asking the court to take that into consideration and give him a credit for time served, judgment satisfied. All right, but the plea is for 210 days, is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, state, is that the plea? It is. Showing you the wave of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Yes, did sir. you understand it? Yes, I did. Did you understand by signing that you're uh, waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions, that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, are there been any such motions? Yes, then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty. State any evidence? Yes, ma'am. All right. You may continue to confer. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, I did. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state would be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? But most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments. Court has reviewed the same. The court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Court will sentence you to 210 days in the Bear County Jail under 1244, give you credit for any time served. And based upon counsel's representation that you're a trustee, the court will give you judgment satisfied. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, I did not. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition if you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, 
All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to make better choices. Otherwise, you're going to find yourself living in somebody's jail. You understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a drug or alcohol problem, there are plenty of places where you can uh, have free help. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. Alfredo Lugo. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, what's happening with this case? Your Honor, it's our first sitting. We've been given an offer, and my client just needs a little time to think it over, and if we can just have 30 days. All right, how old are you, sir? 58. All right, on Alfredo Lugo, can I have a two-week reset for a plea deadline date, please? All right, we're going to come back on March 7th. That will be your plea deadline date. At that time, you'll need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, once you sign a reset form, you can be excused. Just have a seat and they'll get the reset form to you. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Oh, wait, I want, you don't want the probation sheet, do you? All right, and Mr. Hernandez, is he out, Hernandez? Okay. Morning. Morning. Hello, who are you here for? John Lyles, Judge. All right, did you ask for them to pull the file? I, I did, Judge. I asked him. That's all we needed to announce. All right. I He's don't have the file. Yeah. Who do you need? John Lyles. Okay. Oh, thank you. Welcome. John Lyles. All right. Where are we on the case as far as discovery? Uh, discovery, I believe, is from Please Judge. Um, we never, both sides attempted to get a video that's unavailable according to the facility, the, the uh, store. All right, so has an offer been tendered? It has, too. This jury trial to last. One moment, Judge, sorry. It's possession less than a gram case. Okay. Yeah, all right. So can we recall this back for March 5th. Yes. All right, we'll be back on March 5th for a jury trial. All right. Chance, Judge, is there any chance we could do the week after that? I've got it on the 7th. I have a Houston, a matter in Houston. Oh, we'll see where we are. Oh, thank All you. All right. So Lyles can go back. Thank you. Uh, Matthew Hughes. Good morning. Oh. All right, your client has a warrant. Yeah, I just heard about that. So I was thinking, can we, uh, is it possible to recall him tomorrow so I can kind of figure out what the warrant situation is? All right. Touch base with him. Deputy Laura, can we recall him for tomorrow? All right, but you need to be here at 9 a.m. Okay. If you're not here at 9, he's going to get sent back. No worries. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, Matthew Hughes will be recalled for tomorrow at nine. Thank you. Judge, do you happen to know the extension for county IT? I'm sorry, what? County IT for the courtroom computer? Uh, Deputy Laura knows it. <laughs> county IT. Thank you. 
David Olivar. Yeah. Olivera. Yeah. Who's your attorney? Mark LaHood, Judge. I'm here for Marks. Okay. Oh, so he's been accepted to PTD, Judge. All right. If you'll come forward, sir. Can I have a one month reset on David Olvera? All right, we'll come back on March 28th. If your case has been dismissed, then of course you won't need to be here. Once you sign the reset, form your excuse. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, just have a seat. They'll get with you. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. You're welcome. Who's here on Adrian Harper? Do you need a break? Oh, just have a seat. We're going to get with you in one second. Uh, March 28th. Yes. Okay. Just see. Yes. Well, actually, you don't need to do that. Mr. Christman, uh, come down, please. All right, Mr. Christman, I want you to hear me. Everyone, please whisper. I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me clearly. I want you to internalize what I'm saying. Yeah, I always do. All right. So you are going to safe P. If you do not sign the paperwork for safe P, what's going to end up happening? Internalize what I'm saying. What's going to end up happening is a motion to revoke will be filed. That's it. That's what's happening in your case. You are going to safe P. You're going to receive statement at safe P. You're going to be at the Bear County Jail till you're accepted in a safe P. That's what's happening here. Nothing else is happening. Now, there are consequences for actions. If you choose not to sign the paperwork, that's completely up to you. And then I'm going to have to take an action based upon that. And the action based upon that is probation is going to follow. You understand? So if you don't want to sign it, then no one's forcing you to sign it. Do you understand? I understand. I just want a clarification. That's all. All right. Thank you. Um, other things. Okay, I have an announcement to make. This is a big announcement. So everybody have a seat. <laughs> there we go. Yours isn't up yet? No, uh, mine's not either. All right, so the people, the people whose AT&T service is not up yet, I have some bad news for you. They may be saying you have not paid your bill. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, defense and state who's on this trial. Could I see you in the hallway for a moment, please?
John did his seat down the seventh seat. On this, I have the left one that's spoiled. And it starts with L. Lyle. Lyle? Yeah. I haven't heard anything about it. Oh, no, they just said it. Devin Laura. Did you come with me? I'm not sure. Yeah, it turns out I guess we had a, we had a motion for it's based on it's only based on marijuana. Excuse me, guys. Oh, oh, because you got something. Oh, okay. Well, you threw it to you. Probably just not. Well, I might even ask her to say bye. Yeah, yeah, no. 
Uh, yes, if you'll give me the files and I'll take care of it. Okay. All right, thank you. Oh, thank you. Please be seated. Sorry. Uh, just give me one moment and I will do that. Can you see? All right, here's this on Hughes. All right. Joseph Shubiak. And everyone, the trial is going to start at 1.15, but we're still moving with the purpose, and it's starting at 1.15 because there's some tech issues that are going on with the state's computer. All right, court is calling 2023 CR6681, State of Texas versus Joseph Shubiak. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Well, Defense? Lindsay Shaw for Mr. Shubiak, uh, and I'm present for Mr. Shubiak. All right. Any objections to this attorney standing in for Mr. Bach? Objections. And are you Joseph Shubiak? Yes, ma'am. All right. And defense, I know that you were just appointed to represent Mr. Shubiak today. Are you waiving your time? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Shubiak, uh, do you wish for a continuance or are you okay with going forward with this case? Um. I'm okay with moving forward, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? We did, Judge. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Shubiak, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Shubiak, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand your charge of possession of a controlled substance, penalty group one, less than one gram? That's a state jail felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by entering this plea, you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Correct. Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right. Did you understand that the court would have grant your application for deferred adjudication? If for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty, sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes, Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, Do you believe he's currently competent, was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Mr. Shubiak, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Uh, no, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial? Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, there's a $500 fine. State recommends deferred adjudication in the DOEP course. Did you understand those uh, that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, ma'am. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the wave of appeal paragraph. 
Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, are there any such motions? Yeah. Next, I'm showing you outside the plea. The state is requesting that your community supervision be for a term of three years. There be a TAP evaluation and 100 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, Your Honor. Then to the offenses charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Guilty, Your Honor. State any evidence? Your Honor, for state's exhibit one in the attachments. Objection. All right, state, you may continue to confirm. Thank you. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state would be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports, but most importantly, there would be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments and the court will review the same. Yeah, there's truly something wrong with, with the computer. All right, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, ma'am. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, Your Honor, we just ask that the court follow the ruling. Okay, and have I been pronouncing your last name correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so who is uh, Nicole? My sister, Your Honor. All right, and how old is she? Uh, she's 37. All right, and how old are you? 27. All right. And who is Christian Bernal? Um, my brother-in-law. Okay. Is that her husband? Um, soon to be, Your Honor. They're both on felony drug court as well. I don't know if that helps. Is that bad? Well, I, I mean, it that. helps to see what's going on. I mean, like, so my, like, you are, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. No, no um, don't, don't be nervous. Um, um, yeah, no, those are my uh, references, but I mean, I'll have, like, close ties to them, so... That's the best referral that I could give you. I spend a lot of my time with them since they're in recovery. I'm in recovery too. Okay, we're not doing a good job on recovery. I'm, I'm trying, Your Honor. All right, so what type of treatment are you in? Um, right now, I'm just working a 12-step program. I have six months of sobriety under my belt. And then I'm also a student in school. Okay, what are you studying in school? Uh, to become a nail tech. I'm supposed to graduate May 1st. All right. Let me see your nails. I don't have any on right now. I need okay, see. Uh, there are certain professions where if people don't have their nails done and they say they're nail tech, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Uh, now, if it's that stylist can't find anybody who's up to their standards, but nails, not so much. So they should be looking great. Okay. So how often were you using meth? Um, it was a daily thing for about five years. Um, yes, ma'am. In 2018, I tried to do um, an inpatient rehab, 30 days, and I just wasn't ready. I went back out and I was like, I'm going to use until I'm done and then come August of last year. I was just tired of the lifestyle that I was living. I wasn't going anywhere like with myself. So I reached out and got the help that I needed to get sober. Um, and so we're living currently. Okay. And how often are you seeing Nicole and Christian? Um, well, I live with uh, my brother-in-law in sober living. And then I see my sister like almost daily because she's over there like with him at the sober okay, living Okay, that may not. Oh, so they're at the sober living home? They're also like in sobriety. 
So what did felony drug court do to them when they had a relapse? Oh, no, they haven't. Re well, like, they had relapsed or because they had MTR. They've been doing, they've been successfully completing their uh, drug court. Okay. So, like, they're, like, 40 Oh, this is an older case. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, oh, this is from uh, 2021. Okay. Because I was about to be very upset that they're not working their steps. No, with no, ma'am, they are, Your Honor. <laughs> okay. All right. This is what the court will do. I'm going to sentence you to three years deferred adjudication. Of course, if you complete everything early, then I'll consider early termination. Uh, I'm going him to continue uh, with the sober living. We'll do a TAP evaluation out of custody. And if TAP rec recommends inpatient treatment, we're going to start with outpatient treatment to see what your program is that you're actually on. How often are you doing NA or AA or sober support meetings? Um, anywhere from two to three meetings per week. All right. So I'm going to put you at a minimum of two sober meetings per week. And you know what you need to do in order to ma maintain your sobriety. So if you need more than that, that's not going to make me look differently at you. All right. Understood, Your Honor. There's to be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular random UAs. There is to be 100 hours of community service restitution. And if you complete your certificate, uh, certificate or cosmetology or whatever it is for nail techs, I'll uh, deem that the community, super, community uh, service restitution is satisfied. And we'll do a field visit one time and we'll do it every 90 days just to make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Uh, probation, is there anything else? Did you say employment, Jeff? Oh, I forgot. Thank you. Proof of employment within 30 days, no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. All right. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. We can go off the record. Here's the thing. In this court, to be successful on probation, communication is key. If there is an issue and you feel as though that issue is not being addressed, you can always come back to the court. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Just remain in the courtroom and probation will go over conditions with you. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right. And I believe there's a sign right there. Attorneys, could you all read that sign? We did. No, you did. But it's not for you, Joseph. You always follow oh. the rules. But the other people do not. Yes. So, yeah. Follow rules. Larry Evans. Judge, that's my case. Um, Where is he? He's not here. We had court on Tuesday. We stood in front of you and we had a motion to amend conditions of bond. You ruled on that and you reset the case till March. Yes, it's reset for March 18th. All right, if you'll put that in the system for March 18th. Yes. Thank Why you. not here? Thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. And that Appreciate is it. Larry Evans. Let me make sure I put this. All right, are we ready on Hernandez? I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Hernandez. Is he out here? Joe Hernandez? All right, Mr. Hernandez, come on down.
report is calling 2023 CR 10221 State of Texas versus Joe Hernandez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Suzanne Kramer for Mr. Hernandez. All right. And are you Mr. Hernandez? Yes, ma'am. All right. So we're here for a hearing. Uh, there is an issue of discovery with the hotel video. And we do have the person who's responsible for the hotel video on Zoom. Any, any objections to Ms. Kramer and Mr. Patel appearing by Zoom? State? No objection, Your Honor. All right. Mr. Hernandez, do you have any objections to your attorney and the witness appearing by Zoom? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, defense, my understanding you had some questions you wanted on the record uh, addressed to Mr. Patel. Is that correct? Yes, Judge. All right, Mr. Patel, can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you, God? Yes. All right, you need to lower your hand and make sure you speak up because the court reporter has to hear. If you'll state your name for the record. Neil Patel. All right, and it is N E E L. All yes. right, defense. Yes, Judge. Uh, Mr. Patel, um, by my records, this offense that we're seeking the hotel surveillance video occurred on August 25th of 2023, if you recall. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat that again? The offense of which that we're seeking to get your surveillance video occurred on August 25th of 2023. Yes. If you, okay. Um, do you recall at any point in time in the days after that, that somebody from the San Antonio Police Department came to your location requesting the video? Uh, they might have requested with the employees, but um, I don't think I was here August. No. Would you happen to know who those employees are? Uh, my friend working? is. I'm sorry? My front desk, maybe. I don't. I you need to spell that. He said the front desk, maybe. Oh, the front desk, maybe. Is there any way that um, you have access to who of your employees were working on that day? No. Or uh, in from a twenty-five through you don't you don't keep records of when your employees are working? Yes, we do, but for two months. We, so we, discard, we discard the schedules after two months. So if somebody wanted to know if somebody was working at your place after previously from two months ago, you wouldn't be able to, to know that? No. Do you pay them by a check? Yes. So there would be some sort of documentary evidence because of their paychecks when people were working. Yes, so I just said I don't recall who was working that day. But yes, if I do the finding, I can find out. So as far as you know, you were never spoken to by SAPD and your employees never told you, the hotel owner, that SAPD, San Antonio Police Department, came to your hotel wanting a piece of evidence? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? So as the owner of this hotel, or at least the manager, correct? Yes. You're the, you're the man in charge. Yes. You were never visited by San Antonio police. And as far as you know, none of your employees ever came to you saying mm -hmm. San Antonio police wanted to see if there was a video available. No. Do you recall having any kind of telephone conversation with any member of the DA's office within the last two months referencing this video? I'm sorry, your voice is a little low. <laughs> I've never been accused of not of not speaking really loud. Um, or my, my the question, the question <laughs> is, did you have any conversations with the district attorney's office about this video? No. So you say that these videos are recorded over in, within 36 hours? Yes, a loop of 36 hours. So I guess this video at the Alton State was 825. It would have been recorded over by 828 of 23. The, yes, 36 hours. So I'm like 27th or 28th. All right, Judge. I just wanted to establish that for the record. I don't have any further questions. All right. Any questions from the state? No questions, Your Honor. 
All right, thank you for coming in, uh, Mr. Uh, Patel. You're excused. Yes, thank you. All right, so council, there is no video. Yeah, I, I, I just feel like I'm getting different information from the state and Mr. Patel. Of course, it may be his employees, Judge. It just seems to me if his employees had been con contacted by SAPD, they would have told him that. Um, I mean, I don't know what's on this video, so I, I can't really speak to whether it's, you know, exculpatory or not, but I just don't, I don't, I'm going to have to kind of research this further to see when I want to go further on. I know at this point there's nothing I can do because right now there is no video. All right. So can I have a 30 day reset on Mr. Hernandez? And this will be the final discovery date, uh, Ms. Kramer, and also for motion. So if there's a motion you want to file and have the court uh, hear it, it'll need to be filed by this date. Yes, Judge. Yeah. All right. So we'll be back on March 27th. Thank you, Judge. Yeah. Thank you. May I be excused? Yes. Thank you. Joe Pope. That's up here for Joe Pope. Reports information. He's not in Bear County. He's in Adams County. Okay, Adams County. Correct. Is it for a state case or federal? I just found out he was in Adams County. I have no idea. I, I, he was in federal custody last year. So I, I was, I had assumed that he was already released from federal custody and was here. That's why he was on the docket today. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to recall this in 30 days and we're going to find out what's going on. And if he is in Adams County, then we're going to see about having him bench warrant it back here for that date. And the docket only has three cases and he has four. Well, they've given me four files, so oh, okay. we'll make sure that they're on there. Uh, what date? All right, we're going to bring him back on March 27th, and I'm going to ask that he be bench warned it back. By March 27th? Yes. Okay, so not you're not going to bench warn him on 27th to come back in April? Oh, no, I don't do that here. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you can ask my mom. Okay, <laughs> tell her hello. All right, I will. All right, could you make sure that he's bench warrant it back from Adams County? And what city is Adams County? Where are my worlds or local travelers? <laughs> All right, so he'll be back on March 27th. Thank you. And I know we have all of those files, but could you make sure that all of them make it to the docket? Oh, thank you. Jose Garces. That's me, Judge. Yes. Mr. Garces is not in the courtroom. Uh, I was tardy due to juvenile court, and then I texted Norma, but that didn't help this court any place. She's not here today. Oh, she's, so, oh, she's in custody. Mr. Garces is downstairs. And what I'd like to do, Judge, is have him brought back tomorrow morning. It is a first post indictment appearance. Have you conferred with the state? I did. In All fact, right. We had a very long conversation. All right. If we set this for tomorrow, everybody needs to be here at 9 a.m. I will. It was a decent, it wasn't a nine inning conversation. <laughs> it was a nine inning conversation. All right. Deputy Laura, can you put him on for recall for tomorrow? All right. We'll see you tomorrow at nine. So could I see that file on him? Okay. All right. So state Oliver is going to be brought back 
tomorrow at 9 a.m. for a plea. Yes. And it seems like we still have some issues. I cannot believe, Anna, you will be playing with the equipment. <laughs> Is it even working? Apparently not. Oh my gosh. Wait, no, it's working. So that would be tomorrow. Yes, Oliver. Yes. Okay. No, they, when they had a street, they had a street in DC. Yeah, here they go. Thank you. Ralph Campos. Yes, Judge. Uh, Mr. Campos is in custody. Okay. I had been retained for a motion for early termination, which I filed in what we were set here for today. Yes. So, uh, upon arriving, I learned that he has a motion to revoke. Yes. Uh, that is based primarily on marijuana. Yes. However, he has a compassionate use card. He actually has a legitimate. Okay. Um, so my guess is we, we can resolve this, but. All right, if you want to set a bond. All right, if you want to speak to the state, because there's also in the allegations failure to submit. I, I did see that. I, I did confirm and with Mr. Garehan on consuming it. alcohol. I did see that as well. There's no com compassionate use for the co consumption of alcohol. Although that was in last August. I mean, it no, I, I, I hear you. Um, my guess is it wouldn't have been brought to light if it wasn't for the <laughs> marijuana issue. But, okay. Um, my, my guess is. We will probably be able to resolve it at some point. All right, if you all want to speak to each other. Okay. Hank Maldonado. John President Chris. All right. And where is he? It's my understanding he did not appear today. Okay. Hank Maldonado. Let me find him on our docket sheet. Do you all see Hank Maldonado on the docket sheet? Can you look him page six? Ah, okay. All right. Uh, Is there a prosecutor on Hank Maldonado? Oh. Court is calling 2024-CR-1039 and 2024-CR-2071, State of Texas versus Hank Maldonado. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. David, David McClay for the defense. All right, this hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is now 11.30 a.m. Uh, Deputy Lori, did you make an announcement? Yes, Your Honor, there was no answer. All right, defense, have you had any contact with your client? I have not, Judge. I heard from his bail bondsman yesterday. He, uh, the bondsman has indicated that they were going to file an affidavit to surrender shirt because they had not heard from my client that he may have had two warrants. Um, I've not been able to verify the warrants, but um, I have not heard from my client. All right, state. Your Honor, uh, we asked for a bond forfeiture. All right. What the court will do, court will issue a judge's warrant based on the fact that the bondsman, it appears that they are going to file an off bond. I'll issue a judge's warrant in each case and remand your client without bond. If your client makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. That's and great. then you're here for another matter? I do. I've got one more. Uh, That's Mr. Della O. Okay. See if I have the file. All right, where are we on Delo? O? The last time we were here, Judge, um, we had uh, just received the uh, Houston Forensic Science Center's report um, for the DNA reanalysis. Mm -hmm. um, we needed to get the raw data from HFSC. They provided that to us. We've had a chance to go through that. We need to get it to our expert to go through. Um, there's been some correspondence back and forth between HFSC and myself. 
regarding some discrepancies that we found and some trying to figure out the rationale for their uh, interpretation and the methods that they were using. One of them being a, uh, you know, the the parentage probability versus uh, the LR, which is the the, uh, the ratio that they use in another calculation. And we're just trying to just figure out where they're coming from on that. Spoken with Mr. Moore this morning. I think we're at the point where we can try to get this thing scheduled for the 64.4 hearing finally. Um, but we needed to go through a couple of logistics with you just to try to make sure that we've got time to get this to our expert, let him do his analysis, get a report. Obviously, I'm sure the state's going to want to see that report, um, give them a chance to prepare that and get that to the state, give them time to analyze it. Better right. more of my client here and get, get it done. Okay, what we're going to do then is I'll reset it for another 45 days. If y'all have everything before then, of course, we will urgently put it on the docket. Okay. All right. Could I have a, yes. We figure it's probably going to be an afternoon, probably a half day to, to get this done, probably three or four hours. All right. Could I have a 45 day reset and we'll set this in the afternoon at one thirty. Judge, just one more thing. Um, we anticipate the forensic science, um, somebody from their, their facility will want to testify there in Houston. I don't think Mr. McLean or I have an objection to them appearing by Zoom, but the court is okay with that. All right. Are you all are, all right with them appearing by Zoom? Absolutely. We we discussed that this morning. I forgot to put that in there as well. Okay. Yes, that that is fine with us. I think it's prudent. All right. What day? All right. We'll put it down for April fourth. And if you all see that it's getting close to that date and it needs to be moved, just let the court know. Thank yes. you, Judge. We'll do. All right. Is there anything else for Mr. Uh, Delo? Nothing further from the funds. All right, thank Excuse you. Excuse your honor. Yes. Thank you, Judge. Okay. You reached an agreement on Mr. Thomas, if you like. All right, just give me a moment. Sure. Lisa Garcia, if you'll come forward. Probation and state on this case is going to be a reset. Your attorney is ill. Okay. All right. Uh, can we recall this? Uh, it's Lisa Garcia. It's on page 20. Uh, can we recall this in three weeks? March 14th. All right. So you're going to come back on March 14th. Once you sign the reset form, you are excused. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Sergio Martinez, uh, they, can you let him know his attorney is on vacation and they have a vacation letter in? Sergio Martinez. And can we recall this in three weeks? All right. All right, so we'll come back on March 14th. Every attorney needs vacation. You gotta take a you gotta take some time away. Esperanza Bosquez. Capos. Court is calling 2020 CR 3586 State of Texas versus Ralph Compost Jr. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? State of Texas. Uh, Jason here, State of Texas. Defense? Roberto Ambrosino. And are you Ralph Compost Jr.? Yes, Your Honor. Can I have a probation stamp, please? Yeah. Going to show you what's entitled motion to, to revoke community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Are you the same Ralph Compost Jr. who was placed on community supervision in 2020 CR 3586 for the offense of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon on May 18, 2021 
for a term of five years. Is that you? All right, stake. Violated condition number two on or about the 25th day of August 2023 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant Ralph Compass Jr. did then and there consume alcoholic beverages in violation of condition number two. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. And your honor, we'll waive the remaining violated conditions. Any objection? No objection. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number two? Court could find it true, grant the motion, sentence you up to five years in the prison and up to a thousand dollar fine. Yes, sir. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition number two? Court will find violation of condition number two true. Is there a proposed agreement? There is. And what would that be? And it is to deny the motion to uh, revoke and continue the individualized probation with the uh, uh, with the addition to. The levels of marijuana in the system to drop from this day forward into the allowable uh, levels that are under the program that his doctor's prescription allows or the probation allows. Okay. Is that the agreement? It is, Your Honor. Are you asking the court to follow that agreement? Yes, sir. All right. The court will alter the main conditions. The court is going to deny the motion, include 30 sober meetings in 30 days. You're not allowed to drink alcohol at all while you're on probation. And he is to follow the medical recommendations of your physician as it relates to the marijuana use. Is there anything else from either side? Oh, just one moment before we get that. So there is a motion filed for early termination for you that will be denied. No, sir. And the only reason why he has the warrant is because of this case. All right. The court will recall the warrant. And 2020 CR 3586. All right. We can go off the record. You're going to have to do better. You understand? Yeah. All right. Just have a seat. Once the deputies put everything in the system, they will release you. Welcome. All right, could I see that file on Jose Ruiz, please? No, I'm going to see what time he's set for, because I think he was set at nine. And if he's set at nine, we can send him back because his attorneys are not present. Uh, Lorraine? Hi, what was supposed to be happening with Jose Ruiz? It was scheduled at 9 a.m. and it is now 11.39. Yes. Can you mute us, please? Alex Espinoza. No approach, Judge. Yes. <clears throat> what are we here for? Uh, Judge, we just need a little bit more time. I've asked for some issues and we're negotiating. We've been negotiating. All right, how much time have you all asked for? Like a month, Judge. No, Judge, like, I, I have in good faith 
and we communicate outside no, of- No, I mean, people throw the times out there like, oh, like a month, but okay. Well, we can do 60 days, you know, yeah. <laughs> like a couple of years. How much have you been drinking? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll give you two weeks. Uh, <laughs> maybe. All right. Can I have a two week reset on Mr. Espinosa, please? When does it, can we get it after the 18th? Then that's more than two weeks. Well, the 11th, I've got a vacation letter on file with my we kiddos. We can bring it back the week of the 4th. We can set it for uh, the 7th. So you're going to give me less time. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, let's bring Espinosa back on March 7th. And Mr. Espinosa, you cannot be late for court if you were late. You understand? All right, once you sign the reset form, you are excused. Jerry Torres. Judge, we're waiting on blood discovery on that case. Mr. Which Torres, come forward and you can have a seat. They'll call you up when they're ready. We may have received that. So I've been uh, talking to defense counsel about that, Judge. We uh, so Daniel uh, sent off the, the signed order, uh, and we may have received it. I do have a spreadsheet that says this is incomplete. But usually, when we uh, when we receive the blood discovery, it's on a disc and it's in the file, uh, and I don't see that. So I'm I'm going to track that down. Here. All right, Jerry Flores. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I understand that you all are waiting for a blood discovery, but we're just going to put this on the. The seven with your other clients since he's already going to be here and we'll see if they have a blood discovery okay judge all right so see you back also on march 7th thank you thank you judge. okay just be honest Esperanza Bosquez. All right. Deputy Lord, could you announce Bosquez in the hallway, please? Could I have a prosecutor? Court is calling 2024 CR0285, State of Texas versus Esperanza, sorry, Esperanza Bosquez for the state. Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. All right. This hearing was actually scheduled yesterday. The defendant was a no-show, and I asked that it be recalled today. Uh, the hearing was scheduled at 9 a.m. It is 11.44 a.m., and the defendant has not appeared. State? Your Honor, we're asking for a bond forfeiture. And Deputy Lohr, was an announcement made? Yes, Your Honor. There's someone in here that may not always. All right. The court is going to issue a judge's warrant for man, uh, her without bond. If she makes an appearance, the court will reconsider. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Sergio Martinez. Uh, it was Esperanza Vasquez uh, on the recall last page. Christopher Acosta. Yes, I do. That's next. Court is calling 2024 CR 1657 State of Texas versus Christopher Acosta. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense. Megan Enriquez, present for John Hughes for Christopher Acosta. And I'm assuming he's only pleading to one case? That's correct. All right. Are you Christopher Acosta? Yes, Counsel, you received all the discovery. Did you review it with your client? Yes, we did, Your Honor, and we have reviewed it. All right, court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Mr. Acosta, do you have any objection to this attorney standing in for Mr. Kuntz? No, ma'am. Going to show you what's entitled application for community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, and did you sign it? Yes. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? You're proceeding on one of the enhancements. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Proceeding on 
and second enhancement. All right. I'm going to show you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Did you understand you're charged with driving while intoxicated third or more? Normally that's a third degree felony. However, if the enhancement allegation is proven to be true, then your range of punishment will be anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? He has, Your Honor. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? Yes, he does. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes. Mr. Costa, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial, showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. According to the plea, you would agree that you've been previously convicted of a, one or more felonies for enhancement. Punishments be assessed at a cap of 10 years in the prison. There's a $1,500 fine. State opposes your application. They're taking in consideration 2023 CR 4342, and there's to be restitution to SAPD for blood and drug testing. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. State? Yes, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? Uh, the only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Counsel, are there any such motions? Yes, then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? Yes, and to the enhancement in paragraph two of the indictment, how do you plead true or not true? True. State any evidence. Your Honor, I offer states exhibit one in the attachments. No objections. All right, you can continue to confer. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. The court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments and the court will review the same. And right, if we can go off the record for a moment. All right. So, uh, state in defense. The court has in the steps, the judgments from paragraph one, not from paragraph two. It should be behind that, Doug. No. The other one, the other one is 4 8, unless in the indictment, the, it's incorrect. So I don't have 2014-3050. Yes. But they there is the um one that ends in W in there. That's that's what probably what we'll do, Judge. All right. So then uh, the state, are you proceeding on paragraph one of the enhancement instead of paragraph two? Yes, Your Honor. 
All right. And defense, do you have any objection to that? No, as long as the other one is being waived. And yes. So how do you plead to paragraph one of the enhancement? True or not true? True. All right. Very good. All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will find you guilty. The court will find the enhancement true based upon your plea of true and based upon state's exhibits one and attachments. Uh, is it six weeks for... All right, so I'm gonna get a setting for you. We'll come back in six to eight weeks. And at that time, I'll make a decision on your application based upon the PSI report the top evaluation and any other evidence that's submitted. Okay. Your Honor, I, I don't know what the timing is, but he has a doctor's appointment on April 10th. It, can it be after that date of April 10th? Sure. All right, we can put it for April 11th. So the sure. Yes. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, before you leave, you'll need to sign the reset form and speak with probation. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one. You too. Good. Uh, that was Christopher Acosta. Yes, and it's for a sentencing. Yes. All right, just one second. I'll take that up in a moment. And we did not see him in the courtroom. Okay. All right. Adrian Harper. All right. Court is calling 2024 CR 1108, State of Texas versus Adrian Harper. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state. Defense. Hank Wilkins for the defense. And are you Adrian Harper? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? We have, your honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Is there an application in this case? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I don't have an application. Oh, I'm sorry, I do. Papers are getting stuck together. I apologize. No, it's my fault. Mr. Harper, I'm showing you what's entitled application for deferred adjudication or community supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Showing you what's entitled true bill of indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? We do, Your Honor. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? We are, Your Honor. Mr. Harper, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of possession of marijuana, four ounces to five pounds? That is a state jail felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from 180 days up to two years in the state jail facility and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, ma'am. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? That's correct, ma'am. Okay. Did you understand? I'm sorry, just one moment. 
I'm noticing something on the docket. Sorry about that. Counselor, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? Yes. Do you believe he has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against him? I believe he does. Do you believe he's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? I believe he was. Mr. Harper, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No, no. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? Satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, ma'am. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, ma'am. The court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived his right to jury trial. Did you understand if the court grants your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could find you guilty, sentence you up to two years in the state jail facility and up to $10,000 fine? Yes, ma'am. Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? According to the plea, there's a $500 fine and the state recommends deferred adjudication. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? Yes, ma'am. State, is that the plea? Yes, ma'am. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, ma'am. Did. did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Counselor, are there many such motions? No, mm -hmm. Outside the agreement, the state is recommending deferred adjudication for a term of four years, a TAP evaluation, and 120 hours of community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am. Then to the offenses charge, how do you plead guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, any evidence? Your Honor, I offer State's Exhibit 1 in the attachments. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. You may continue to confer. Showing you what's entitled waiver and consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, ma'am. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one and attachments. Court has reviewed the same. The court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding a guilt as you apply for deferred adjudication. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Oh, yes, sir. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? I want to clarify something. Is my client being, I believe, the indictment reflected a repeater allegation? Yes, and the state is not proceeding on the repeater allegation. Okay, that's what I want to clarify. Yes. And what was your question? Are you ready to proceed with sentencing? Yes, Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? Um, I have reviewed the lab report. And the amount of marijuana in possession of the lab report is like 14 grams more than four ounces. So it's really I don't want to minimize it, but I would like the court to understand that we're not looking at a very large amount. We're not looking at anything near um, the larger, the larger in the scale, we're much closer to the smaller one. All right. Are you employed? Yes, ma'am. What do you do? I'm a server at Blue Prime Steakhouse. I'm sorry, where? A uh, Blue Prime Steakhouse, ma'am. Blue Prime Steakhouse? Yes, ma'am. And I'm assuming the best thing in the order is the steak? Yes, okay. All right, do you have any children? Yes, ma'am. Are they staying with you? No, ma'am. Um, they're with the, the mother of my children. We have a split custody. All right, if you're drug tested today, what are the results going to be? Uh, marijuana, for sure. Anything else? No. All right, this is what the court is going to do. Court is going to sentence you to three years deferred adjudication. There should be proof of employment within 30 days. No employment as a home health care provider with minors. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There is to be 120 hours of community service restitution. How far did you go in school? Uh, I started my associates, but I dropped out when I, my girlfriend got pregnant. All right. 120 hours community service restitution. That will be deemed satisfied if you have a degree or if you obtain some sort of, some sort of uh, 
certificate from a trade school. You understand? Otherwise, you're going to have to do the 120 hours. Yes, ma'am. There is to be regular UAs, tests for levels. I'm going to want 30 sober meetings in 30 days. Field visits one time per month for three months and then at probation's discretion. Uh, probation, is there anything else? All right, is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement. Because I followed your plea bargain agreement. And because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. You have children. What are their ages? Two and three months. All right. I'm sorry, but Sean, can you add parenting classes, please? You should not be smoking marijuana when you have children who are that age or at all, because children learn from their parents. Do you understand? So do better. Be somebody that your children will be proud to say, that's my father, instead of saying, that's my father. I know his vehicle smells like drugs. I'm sorry. You don't want that on your children. You understand? All right, thank you. Have a great day. All right, you too. Thank you, Judge. All right, you can take your leave. Okay. All right, could I see the file on Devin Strike? Yes. Judge, let me grab my client. She's sitting in the hallway. All right, thank you. Oh, actually, I'm getting a um, pinch. Daniel Ramirez. Oh, if you have the file there, if you don't, that's fine, because I don't think he's on the docket. So just make sure that this missile gets in there. All right, so Ramirez, where are we on discovery and other things? Judge, uh, Judge we, um, Mr. Ramirez has uh, two cases pending in County Court E. One of them uh, is a DWI from 2022 that was never filed. It's, it was just a one filing. Okay. So I emailed the the prosecutors down in County Court to file that case. Okay. So uh, we would like to get some more time because we're talking about maybe this might be something we can resolve all three of the cases at once, Judge. All right. On uh, Daniel Ramirez, he's on page six. Can I have a 30 day reset, please? <clears throat> March 21st. All right, March 21st. Once you sign the reset form, you are excused. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, you too. All right, and I think Johnny's client, Gabriel Almanza, that was reset, correct? Uh, because he's in jury trial. <laughs> All right, and that's reset for March 14th. The attorney's on vacation. And then yes. Yes. No, do it as a judge's warrant. We're man without bond. Yes, sir. Thank you. Juan Ramos. He's in custody and, and climbing wise, they're not able to bring him up. No. So what we'll do is we'll recall it for next week. Are you able to be here next week? Yep. Okay. okay. 
Oh, sorry, not next week. It'll be the first week in March. Like the fourth week? Yes, the week of the fourth. And it's only because there's a special case that's set for the end of the month, and it's a murder case. Can we do the fourth? Well, yes. I have one other case. Yes. All right, so Juan Ramos is going to be recalled for March 4th. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your patience. Hey, I'm getting better at sending my emails. You would be proud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, for content. And for oh, yeah. for the top well, you know my emails that I used to send? It would be like, hello, we need this. And he said, your emails are not flowery enough. <laughs> well, that's what you meant. I was reading your mind. <laughs> Put the name. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Renee Torres. All right, on that case, there's going to end up being a bond forfeiture, but uh, we're going to do that at 115. Just put that on the record. Yes, because ah, yeah. hmm? oh. okay. Well, that explains it. Yes, so that's what the attorney does. That's like right. the response that all right so what we'll do is we'll let's reset this for march uh 7th to see what's going on and, and just like i mean I, we are proceeding on our cases I, okay I found out through my supervisor all right okay thank you well we'll make sure that we find out what's happening with the federal case to see when we can get it And for my Texas people, where exactly is Carnes? About an hour. It's on the way to Corpus. Thank you. All right, everyone, uh, the court is going on break. I have the files that I have. No other files have been presented to me. There can be the motion um, that Zach had, uh, State had agreed to for Thomas Lozano. All right, so here's my question. Yes, sir. And you know, I take everybody at their word that's in here. But if you all want to have the, is there a at litem for the child in this case? Yes. Um, is it Stacy January or Elena oh, Pearsall? All right, so if y'all want to have Elena Pearsall zoom in here, I would consider this motion. But okay. it's not going to happen today. Yeah. The, the earliest it can happen is maybe Friday. Do we need to request to get on docket for it? Since Yes, if you just have them put it on the docket. But if we do it on Friday, it's at 9 a.m. And if anybody is not here at exactly at 9, then it's not going to be happen because happening because we're in a jury trial. 
Okay, let's, we'll check with Alana then. All right, should we take that back or do you want to- Oh, you can it leave here? it here and they'll okay. put it in the file. Okay, thank you, Judge. Oh, here it is. Yes. 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 Uh, Mr. Smith, on the dime, uh, we have an agreement. Mm -hmm. Paperwork needs to be completed. All right, that's going to have to come back. Uh, so let me. I would. I would ask that we come back Monday. I have a, a, a funeral to attend this evening, and tomorrow is the funeral. Okay, we won't be able to come back on Monday because we have a jury trial that's specially set. If you want to come back this afternoon and we can take it up at some point during the break, otherwise we can't do it. And it won't be able to get done until the first week in March. We couldn't do it during the break. Well, that's what I said. If you want to get all the paperwork together and if we have a break during the trial, then it can be done this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be the week of March 4th. Don't do it on Zoom. Sure, if you all want to do it on Zoom, but he'll need to have everything signed. That's fine. All right, thank you. I appreciate yes. It. Yes. We have a dismissal up there for you. Uh, I signed it on Mr. Strike. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're good. Is Mr. Strike free to go? Yes, he's free to, Mr. Strike, you had better do better with your life, you understand? I don't want to see you back here unless you're coming back because you're graduating from somewhere and you're asking me to appear. You understand? All right. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Who is Guyana? And everyone, we're going to take our break.